So uh, this is Bob Fauche, main guide. And how long have you been guiding up here again? About 20, a little over 20 years. 20 years. Yeah. And uh, you're mainly your grouse and woodcock guy, and exclusively. And we're in central Maine right now, uh, end of October. And how's the season been so far? For the you? season has been has been good this year. Yeah, it's been good this year. Uh, it hasn't been a hot so hot this morning, but it's been pretty good. This right. Year. Has it been better than years past, or about on par? Or? A little better than the last couple of years, I'd say. Mm -hmm. uh, I think last time out we moved 25 birds or something like that, which which is good. 25 birds is good anywhere, actually. Right. Uh, mainly woodcock, or? Mainly woodcock, but a, gr a grouse here and there. Probably three or four woodcock to every grouse. The grouse here are a little bit different than up north in the fact that uh, they're educated. Yeah. You know, all the dumb ones got out of the gene pool. Right. <laughs> they don't stick around on points very long. No. That's for sure. That's for sure. So, uh, and. You're 79, right? So you have to have been at it up here longer than just about anyone else I know. Still going at it. Well, there's a few, there's a couple of guys that have been doing this in this area for quite a long time. But, mm -hmm. uh, yeah, probably m longer than most. And you, and your dog, Nelly, is it? Nelly. Yeah. German short hair. German right? short hair. Yeah. yeah. First one I ever had. Uh -huh. First one I ever had, and I, and I'm, I, I like her. I yeah. li I, she's an easy dog, close ranging, uh, knows what she's doing. Had a lot of experience and got her as a pup. And uh, she's a good dog. I've been very lucky. I've had some very good dogs. And how does she compare to the uh, the pointers and the setters and everything you've had? A little, little, not quite as rangy. Uh, doesn't hunt as much on her own uh, as they did. But they're all good in their different ways, you know. She's uh, comfortable to hunt over because uh, she is closer ranging than my pointers and setters. And uh, she's just a, a, you're not worried about where she is mm -hmm. most of the time. Right. So, and she checks in a lot. How far do you think she's, uh, what's she about, a 50, 60 yard dog? Probably. Yeah. Probably. If, they, if the covers are small, she'll range very close. If she's not finding a lot of birds, she'll start reaching out, mm -hmm. and, uh, which is good. You know, it, it shows an intelligence about uh, about hunting, and she's had a lot of experience. Mm -hmm. Right. You know, had her out since she was a pup. Yeah. She hunts a lot more than most dogs. Yeah. So if uh, you had to tell someone who's looking into getting a bird dog, what would be the advice that you'd give? What's the most important thing you think? The most important thing is breeding. Yeah, you know, you, you, in order to have a, a hunting dog, you got they've got to come from a line of hunting dogs. Uh, mm -hmm. You're not going to find them uh, in the pet or the show material. Most of the time, you know, occasionally one might come out of there, but uh, you want to go with dogs that are bred to uh, to hunt in the field. Mm -hmm. And uh, there's a lot of good ones. And you had a cocker spaniel. I had uh, the, probably the first cock, uh, hunting cocker, field bred cocker in the Northeast. Where did you get it? I got it from Wales. Oh yeah. In overseas Wales. Uh -huh. in Wales, Maine. So how did you find her? Did you just read about her? Or? I uh, talked to different people. I, the cocker stuff started in the early 90s. Very few of us, probably 15, 20 in the country. And uh, this guy had a reputation a good reputation. His name was Gwyn, uh, and uh, of bringing dogs, exporting dogs here to the United States. I went on uh, what people had said about him, and I got a wonderful dog. So back then, did you just send him a letter, or did you call him up on the call phone? Call him on the phone. <laughs> call him on the phone. Huh. Talked with him, and uh, there were two brothers that were breeding dogs. Uh, one did most of the breeding; the other did most of the selling. But they had an, uh, an, a reputation in England. And, and a reputation for sending good dogs over here. And uh, I was tickled to death with him. He's one of the best dogs I ever owned. Mm -hmm. Certainly one of the best. And he had quite a reputation because there weren't that many around. Right. Uh, we bred him to uh, some dogs from Canada, Massachusetts, Colorado, uh, all around because he uh, he was, uh, you know, there weren't that many stud dogs around. Right.
And so, what was better than that, about that dog than the uh, than the pointers and the setters and everything you had? What it wasn't stood better. Out? He was. Uh, there was a closer bond. The cockers are very. That's the reason they got to be such good pets. Mm -hmm. Is that they they really bond with uh, with people closely. Even you know even your American cockers. I had a good American cocker back 45 years ago. We used to hunt him on chucker in California because mm -hmm. the big dogs that would chew their feet up and the little cocker could run on top of it all day long. Right, so all light. he did was retrieve. But uh, so, but the English, the field bred English cocker is a wonderful dog. And they're, they're getting more and more popular. But they have to, it has to come from field breeding. It can't come from show breeding. Right. Or breeding. Yeah, they're much different dogs. Much different dogs. They don't even look the same. Yeah, those, those show ones now are. Yeah. The, the stubby little noses and the yeah. peculiar little dogs. So. Yeah. Well, that's about it. Thanks for your time. You're Scott welcome. And, and uh, we'll get back to hunting. Good. Hopefully we'll find some more birds. Yeah. <laughs> Thanks, Bob. Sure. I'll make a whole little video.